Let's try something. What do you expect that will happen if you have an API that returns a 301 redirect status code, that is redirecting to something like Google? And on the other hand, you have something like a test that is using C Sharp and the HTTP client to perform a GET request to that endpoint. What's the status code that you expect to have on the response? A 301 redirect or a 200 OK? If you answered 200 OK, you are correct. But let me tell you, that was not what I was expecting. Somehow it didn't come to mind that the HTTP client, by default, would implement the redirect so I wouldn't see it. But let me tell you the complete story on how I realized that I was wrong. And also, I will explain to you how can you test a scenario like this. So, recently I've built a new course at ThumbTrain that you can find here. And that is a course where I, my goal was to build a, from the ground up a new URL shortener. And obviously, we need to test that, right? So, in an URL shortener, one of your goals is to make sure that you redirect um, a short URL to a long URL. So, we need to have a test in place for that. So I was naive when I was implementing it because I was expecting that uh, when I add a test calling that endpoint, I was expecting to get a 301 when I provide a valid short URL. Then I implemented the endpoint and I start realizing that the test was always failing with a 200 OK. And I, it couldn't come to my mind that the reason was that the HTTP client was already redirecting the request. Somehow, I thought that it would be the responsibility of the developer to handle those cases. So you would check the result, and if it was a, 200, a 301 or a 300 and something, you would redirect yourself. But let me tell you one thing, that would be terrible. Otherwise, when we depended on someone and on a given API, and they change something like the, the endpoint, we would need to do a lot of code, right? So this way, it's easier for us. And that's perfect. Let, let's let face it. I, thank God they have done it that way. I was stupid enough to not thinking about that scenario. But the question is, how do we now can uh, test something like that when we are the ones that are returning the 301? So that led me to discover that we have a way to do that. So let's build a scenario with that, and I will show you. So, first thing that we'll do is that we'll create a simple API, nothing fancy. So, new project, web, and let's call it API. It's an empty project. Let's create it. With the project in place, let's bring a new endpoint. The redirect. The redirect will return the results.redirect, and there we'll provide the given endpoint. So this way, what will happen is that I will get a 302. Why? Because by default, there's a parameter, the permanent, that is false. If I set it to true, I get the 301. If I leave it uh, as false, I will get the 302. So the difference is that um, there's two different status codes for a permanent redirect and um, a temporary redirect. So in this case, let's say that we want the uh, 301, so we would say that is permanent. So just that. Now let's build our tests. So for our test, let's create a new project. This time, a unit testing project. Let's change it to XUnit because I prefer that way. And now let's call it API tests. Create the project. And how can I test that API? A great way to do it is by using something named Web Application Factory. For that, we need to bring a package. Simply search for this one, the Microsoft ASP.NET Core MVC Testing. Install it. And now, how do we use this Web Application Factory? So, the Web Application Factory will basically start kind of like an in-memory version of our API, the API that we are targeting to. So, a good idea is to start it in the context of a fixture. Why? Because you want to reuse that resource in all of your tests. I could do it right away here inside of the test, um, but that what would mean is that if I have several tests and I was doing that in several places, I would be starting multiple instances of that API. I don't want that. So what I will do 
is that we'll quickly bring a new class that will be our API factory. On our API factory, we will now implement the web application factory. But this web application factory needs something. We need to say, I want to use the application factory for this specific application, so our API. What we need to do to add a type from that API right here. The way that we used to do that is that on those days that we used to have always a startup file, we would point here to that startup file. Nowadays, it's rare to have that. So one way that I'd really like to do it is by using an interface, and I will usually name it, I give the name of the project, this case is the API, and I name it assembly marker. The assembly marker is the interface assembly marker. It's a conventional pattern that you know that if I read something named uh, assembly marker and is an interface, I know the goal of this uh, interface. The goal is to uh, represent this interface for this project for some reason. So now, from the outside, I can say that this one will be using the iAPI assembly marker. That means that now I bring the reference and now I'm pointing to there. Advantage, now I don't have the risk of someone coming and not understanding uh, what this thing is doing here. If I have a, an empty class here without anything inside, likely someone would remove it and wouldn't understand why the tests were failing or not compiling now. So this way I have the web application factory. That means that when I'm on my tests, so let's call it redirect tests, I can have one like um, should return 301 when request to redirect. Now, what I want is the HTTP client to call that API. So the way to do it is by bringing into the redirect uh, tests the factory, okay? So that API factory. So I want to get that through an injection. But how XUnit will be doing that? The way to do it is that I, on this class, I will say to implement the I class feature for the API factory. This way I'm applying a, a class feature from XUnit. That means that this code inside of the API factory will run once for all the tests inside of this class. So now, once I have my factory, I can create a client. So the client can be assigned to a HTTP client. So it's equal to HTTP client. That means that I can create a field, as you can see, is an HTTP client. So let me get here some space. And now what we do? Now we want to call that endpoint. So we'll do the HTTP client, get a sync, slash redirect. We want this test to be asynchronous. So a sync task, because we want to await this sync and keep the response. Now that I have the response, I can go to the response, go to the status code, and since I'm using XUnit, I can check that assert equal and the expected value would be the, the HTTP status code permanent redirect. What happens if we run this test? So run the test, the test fails. We are expecting the permanent redirect, but we are getting the, okay, that's not what we are expecting. What is happening here is that the HTTP client is uh, uh, performing the redirect based on the response of our API. So that's why on the response, we can't find the answer that we are looking for. So how can we do that? The answer, in fact, is quite simple. When we use the API factory, we have access to this create client method. That create client method is the one that returns an HTTP client, and there's a possibility to provide a set of web application factory client options. 
And there we can set things like the allow auto redirect to false, that if you take a look by default is true. So that means that by default we'll always try to do the redirect, but we can uh, disable it if we want. Once we do this and we run the tests again, okay, now they are failing, but it was by my mistake, um, the expected value should be the move permanently, not the permanent redirect. So let's run the test once again. Okay, it succeed. So let's set the breakpoint. And now we can see on our response two things. So we can check the response dot status code move permanently. If we check it as an int, is the 301 as we were expecting. And the other thing is that if we go to the response dot headers, we have the header with the location that is the one that is used to redirect to. Other things that you can do with the web application factory client options. So as you can see, it's a limited set of things like ch setting the base address, um, changing the way that the cookies are handled during the tests and the max automatic redirections. So you can set a limit by default is seven um, of redirections that can happen. So on this case, what makes sense is that we disable the allow auto redirect. I know that it's rare to face something like this, but it's quite useful to know that you have default behaviors on the web application factory on the HTTP client that try to abstract you from these type of scenarios. And one day you might need them and trust me, you might not be expecting them or I know you are smarter than me, but it made me lose some time to, and I was confused. I couldn't understand why this thing was happening, but now I know. So I hope that this was at least a bit useful and that you learned something new today. And now I think you will like to watch this video right here because there I'm using the Web Application Factory to help me test drive an API.